everyone. This is John Daly again for BQB and Right Life Publishing. Today I have Jer uh, Jerry with with Kopsky and Deanna Shoss, authors of the upcoming book Where Two Worlds Meet: A Guide to Connecting with Your Teenage Grandchildren. How are you two, two doing today? Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it's only 60 here in California, so it's nice. Oh, good. Nice, nice. So before we get into your book, which uh, revolves around a very interesting and important topic, can each of you tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and your interests? Sure. Yeah. I always like, to, we're so funny. You'll see that this is how our, you'll, you're getting a taste of our process of working together. We always like to defer to the other first. So, <laughs> So, well, Jerry probably has the most to say since he is the grandparenting activist. So what I will tell you is for me, what I love about the opportunity with the book is that we took an intercultural and an intergenerational approach like that lens and then applied it to the field of grandparenting. And that's that's my background. I speak uh, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. I'm in a, my husband's Brazilian, we're interfaith, we're intercultural, and I work a lot with non-digital natives. So people who grew up without technology, who are now running businesses. So I'm often helping uh, people to learn the current communications and technologies of, of, of the world today. So it's very exciting for the book to take all of that knowledge and then to co-create with Jerry to apply it to the world of grandparenting. I'm uh, gonna be 97 in two weeks, the end of this month. And uh, 94, when I get 97. I was gonna say, because you look fabulous for 97. Yes, thank you. And uh, I've uh, I worked for the Jewish Community Centers of Chicago for 47 years. The last 18 years, I was the general director of the Jewish Community Centers of Chicago. In the, my period with JCC, I was the director for 15 years of our resident camp in Wisconsin called Camp Shy. So uh, I have, uh, I'm a grandpa. I have six grandchildren and two and a half great-grandchildren. The half will be born in, uh, I think, July or August. And uh, so I'm I'm uh, just a very lucky guy and very lucky to have a partner like Deanna, who is a terrific writer. Mm -hmm. And we unleash each other's creativity all the time. And For today sure. will un today will unleash your creativity. <laughs> Oh, very good. Very good. Um, so as I was learning about your book, um, this topic really sort of hit home for me. Um, my parents and my wife's parents, um, they're all in their 80s and our children, their, their grandchildren are uh, teenagers. And as you point out in your writing, uh, the relationship between grandparents and grandchildren is, is pretty easy in those early years when the grandchildren are little. But once you, um, you grow into teenagers, maintaining that same uh, close connection um, is, is often difficult for the grandparents. And your book is designed to help grandparents in that respect. Um, I assume that in addition to the, um, the expertise you both have, um, where uh, Two Worlds Meet was inspired uh, by personal family experiences, can you both talk about uh, what all factored into the creation of this book, including uh, the recognizing uh, for the need for it? The, uh, the the understanding of what an adolescent goes through, we were adolescents, we raised adolescents, and now we really, understand. my son is a uh, adolescent psychiatrist, and uh, we understand that the adolescents today are going through, uh, who am I, who do I wanna be? And uh, there's drugs, there's liquor, there's the car you're teaching them how to drive, and who goes in their car, who doesn't go in their car. And uh, if they're a great basketball player in high school, now the parents push them to be the greatest basketball player. You go to college and you get paid to play on those teams. So you got your own meal ticket. And who am I and who do I wanna be? And uh, my sibling, she went to college or she's in college now and changed her major three times. Who is she gonna be? figuring out who to be. Uh, so it's through that that process of a kid growing up, where does a grandparent fit into that? I would ask my grandchildren when they were in high school, please send me what you write for your classes so I can read what you're doing and you can teach me and I can learn from what you're doing. 
and they did that. I was lucky they would do that. Uh, and, and we we want to help these grandparents take your grandchild out for a dish of ice cream. Don't be judgmental and just hug them and love them. That's all you got to do. Teach them values and don't worry about the valuables. You will leave them your gold watch and your uh, old Rolls Royce. Well, I think what Jerry hits home, which is so important, because he's talking about the idea of values or valuables or reading their papers, that what you find is, as you mentioned, when, when grandkids are little, it is the sweet treat or the, you know, going to the train museum. But this idea that you can actually really try to know what's going on in their mind, that is a more advanced idea and a more advanced way of engaging with grandchildren and the teenage years are when that's happening in full force you know as jerry mentioned they're trying to figure out who they are and and everybody is stumped you know both parents and grandparents and teachers and camp directors everyone's like how do we reach the teenagers so jerry has this experience of having raised his own children through the teenage years. He's raised his grandchildren or he's he's connected with his grandchildren through the teenage years. And delightfully for me, the whole time we were writing this book, I had I have a teenager. So so when they talk about the adult parent and how important it is for all three gener generations to come together, I was living that. So I was able to apply things to my teenage son. My son is now 20 um, and then my parents as well. And it was really exciting to get, you know, conversation starters and dialogue and ideas and concepts that I could be applying and getting feedback in real time because I was living it as we were writing the book. Oh, that sounds like a, it sounds like such a great resource to have. Um, so what would you think you... your, your teenagers look at you and say, look at my dad. He has this important job. My mother's a doctor. Who am I? Who am I going to be? Yeah. And they're a pain in the butt too, my mom and dad. Not you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> <laughs> and half the time they don't understand what we do, even if we tell them. But, you know, that's the joy. That's why it's important to enter their world because, you know, developmentally, brain science wise, it's normative for teens to be very focused on on their own world. And so the fact that we're now giving grandparents ways to understand that world so they can enter it and meet them where they are, it's it's so important. The research has been done when grandparents play this role they enhance the, the mental health of the teenager mm -hmm. and the mom and dad mm -hmm. because they aren't judgmental. They just hug and listen and not and listen and listen and listen. They don't got to make comments. Oh, if I was you, I would have done the following. Mm -hmm. No, you did it. OK. Give me a hug. There you go. There you go. Now, what would you say? I'll, I'll ask each of you this. What was the hardest part about writing this book? Deanna? So I see now you're getting me to repeat what Jerry and I were talking about before, which was what a joy it was to write the book. So first I would say our creative process is so wonderful because we really, you know, this is the idea where one plus one equals a hundred. The two of us together with the way, the different way that we frame things really always made a, a greater outcome. So the writing itself was always a joy. You know, I think we both felt charged and electric after we had sessions where we would write together. What was an opportunity to really make sure we had a process that worked was the fact that the world changed. You know, we started this book pre pre pandemic where in some ways, it was grandparents, you have the opportunity to be the best grandparent you can be, and you have the opportunity to really have, have a connection and impact with your, your grandchild. Then, you know, the, the Surgeon General declared there was a mental health crisis. And so what we're realizing now is beyond being something really nice to do to bring families closer together, there's actually almost like a dictum or a, an obligation for grandparents because they've got the unique experience. They've lived through so much. And now with the mental health crisis, there's more of an urgency to it. And so I would call that a challenge in the sense that we really wanted to go back through the book and make sure 
that it went beyond just isn't this nice and how do we really make sure that we're supporting grandchildren because they really need the support and the, the network uh, at this point in time. My, my passion is that I uh, I'm a social worker. I have a degree in social work, and as I say, I win JCC. But the older adult, and I don't want to call them the senior adult, they're older adults. The older adult, when I can help them unleash their their creativity mm -hmm. and their passion for their family, just think of the wisdom and knowledge they bring over the years to the life of their grandchildren who they love and their adult children who they love. Mm -hmm. To be a part of that that fan, that network within the family that they care so much about and then get the feedback that they've been helpful. How do we use our older years? And I, mm -hmm. uh, you know that there is an ageism, ageism issue. Just watch stuff on TV and you'll see the stuff they're selling. No older adult is going to buy that stuff. Uh, I'm even working with synagogues to try and figure out how do we serve the older adult? because they're there and they want to be part of the synagogue. Uh, and so how do we continue to learn ourselves? So the excitement of living and the excitement of being a part of our family and sharing that knowledge and wisdom is really the greatest joy. What would, what would you say would be the most rewarding part? Uh, it sounds like you know, you've, you've sort of described um, how the writing itself has been rewarding who what would be your ideal the type of benefit that you would best hope for as as far as readers who are who are who are going to, who are reading your book that we can free them up to use their creativity wisdom and knowledge with their family that's what we want to do mm -hmm. I would say too, and I, I get this inspiration having worked with with Jerry is this idea that you can learn create and contribute across the lifespan you know jerry has a phrase he goes don't die until you're dead um, because it's that idea that as long as you're alive that you can bring goodness and creativity into the world and there's so many ideas you know each chapter in the book has a different idea or a different approach that grandparents can can apply to their own families each chapter ends with journaling expeditions where there's exercises that allow them to take the learning and apply it to their specific family and so i would hope that people would read this book and at the end they would have the skills they would have a new paradigm of of how to look at entering the world of their grandchildren and inviting their grandchildren to enter their world and that They'll just be excited to know that there is hope, that there is opportunity, that they have the power to really bring a wholeness and an, an anchor and an aspiration all to their family through the learning of the book and what they, who they are at the start, what they bring to their own family. The hardest thing for me is understanding the new technology. I have now uh, created Zoom family calls at four o'clock on Sunday with my family. Now, sometimes the teenagers show up and sometimes they don't. Uh, but uh, I can call my grandson, the rabbi, who just got a job at the new synagogue, uh, and we spend an hour on the phone. And then I see his face, he sees my face. It's a Zoom call. So Deanna is the expert on technology. And she has mainly helped me understand all the technology and how you can use it uh, to enhance your life with your family and your teenagers. Or you call them when you run into a problem. Mm -hmm. If they live in the same town, you say, help me figure this out. Okay, Grandpa, blah, 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 blah. And here they help you figure out how to use mm -hmm. the technology. Mm -hmm. And one thing Jerry points out that's very important from the book is that you know, because of longevity and because of of all the the remote communication things, grandparents may be in the lives of their grandchildren for you know forty plus years. So when Jerry talks about connecting with his son, who's the rabbi, you know that son went from sending his high school papers to Jerry when he was in high school to now sending his sermons as a grown up adult. Meaning that the learning that you get in the book, it doesn't have to stop. It starts with the teenage years because about age 12 and 13 is when, you know, when developmentally teenagers, you know, the brain starts to change and they're looking for how am I this independent being. 
But once you get these practices in place, they just grow with you. There's no reason that they need to end, you know, with the teenage years. They just keep growing. And whenever they send you your their their your papers, you never are judgmental. You mm -hmm. should have done this. You should have thought of this. You say, thank God I never heard that word before, or I didn't understand that. You helped me learn a whole new thing. And of course, they are learning new things in college that I never learned. And uh, it's exciting. That the okay. excitement of living in your mm -hmm. older years, John, it's really great. Oh no, it's 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 it sounds like such a, a great book, and a uh, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are going to uh, get a lot of help from it. And um, I should mention, um, I did mention that it's an upcoming book. It, it releases in June, um, but it, it is available for pre-order now um, everywhere. Um, I want to thank you both for uh, for for taking the time and doing this interview. This has been really good talking to you uh, face to face like this. Um, can you tell people uh, how to find out more about your you, your work, and your book? Sure. If you just go to where two worlds meet .com, that's the anchor for everything. You'll find the book, the link to buy the book, uh, as well as any information to connect with both of us individually. So to make it easy, where two worlds meet .com. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Jerry and Deanna. Um, hope you have a, a great day and I uh, appreciate you sharing this information with us today. Thank it's you so much. Me and you, John. Mm -hmm. Oh, and let us know if you need any tips for your for your teenagers. Oh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be mailing you. I'll be glad to talk to your parents and your wife's parents anytime. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I will say just at the end here that I, when you mentioned about, you know, children not knowing what their parents do, I'm sort of in the position where neither my, my parents nor my children don't, neither know what I do. So, <laughs> any, uh, any, any uh, advice from you on that uh, to help with that, I would, I would very much appreciate. <laughs> Show them an interview like this and explain what that meant to you. That's and ask your mom that's and dad, what does it mean to you, mom and dad? Then oh, have awesome. your, have your, have your grand, have your children write a letter to your grandparents. This is what I've learned from you, grandma. This is what I learned from you, grandpa. That's excellent. That's, I'll be calling you all the time now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>